Good morning. So good to see you all in the house of the Lord this morning. Let's stand together as we begin our time of worship. Yours will be the only name that matters to me. will be the friendship and affection I need to feel my father smiling on me the only name that matters to me and yours is the name the name that has saved me mercy and grace the power that forgave me and your love is all I favor I seek, the only name that matters to me, and yours is the name, the name that has saved me, mercy and grace, the power that forgave me, and your love is all I've ever needed. When I wake up, Tell my story. There will be one name that I proclaim. When I wake up in the land of glory with the saints, I will tell my story. There will be one name that I proclaim. Yeah, la 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 la. Just that name. Sing that again. Jesus. 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 Just that name. When I wake up in the land of glory with the saints, I will tell my story. seated. <clears throat> well, again, good morning. We want to, of course, welcome those of you that are in the building with us today and those watching online. Uh, those of you who happen to be catching us on Facebook, please comment below and let us know uh, where you're watching us from and post any prayer requests that you have in the comments below 
or on our church's Facebook page. If you have not already done so, please subscribe to our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram channels so that you can be kept up to speed with everything that's going on here at FPC Wayne. Of course, please send Mallory Speaks at the phone number uh, that's showing on the screen, any prayer requests that come up during the week. Also, if you know of any updates to our ongoing prayer requests, please let myself, Jim Paddock, or Mallory know. Now, I did not uh, include this on my announcement sheet. Uh, when I came in here last night to sort the music and everything, I saw a flyer for this on the front pew, so I figured I'd better announce this. That this coming Saturday... July the 24th, we will be having a special celebration right here at the church from 2 to 4 p.m. to celebrate our own Karen Jennings 50th wedding anniversary. Hey. This is a uh, come and go type thing. Uh, she said, no gifts are necessary, but if she's anything like my late father, money is always welcome. Because she's, my dad used to say it's the gift that keeps on giving, and it never goes out of style. Uh, but we're going to have that celebration this coming Saturday, so if you can, uh, please come and uh, share in this celebration with Karen and Doyle. 50 years is quite an accomplishment, and uh, we want to celebrate that with them. The food pantry will be open again on Saturday, July 31st. Uh, you'll find a list of pantry needed supplies there on the back table. You can also see Billy and Brenda Farmer for any special needs they may know about, such as clothes, baby items, things like that. And monetary donations are always welcome. Please be sure and designate food pantry if you're using one of the envelopes in the pews. That way it gets to the right place. We, of course, want to thank those of you who continue to send in your tithes and offerings. Uh, you can do that by mail or through the church website. You can also call the church to either bring your tithes and offerings by or if you need, we can come pick them up for you, whatever is most convenient for you. A uh, few prayer requests, of course, that I want to mention. Uh, we want to continue to pray for our new pastor, Rick Harrison and his family. Uh, pray for our youth group, particularly those who made commitments at Falls Creek. Uh, pray for George Kernick. Phyllis and Philip Webster, Ron Westbrook, Bill and Catherine Bogus, Jack Morrison, Rose Payne, uh, Jeff Weaver, <clears throat> Mallory's great Nana May, uh, James's dad Jimmy. Pray for uh, Bill's family members Hannah, Alan, and Shelley, who are all uh, dealing with COVID right now. Uh, pray for Rachel's aunt Terry. Most of you saw the flock note that went out last night with that prayer request, so pray for that situation. Continue to pray for our nation and its leaders, our health care workers and other frontline workers in the battle against COVID, and pray for an end to this pandemic in the name of Jesus. Brother Jim, would you take us to the throne, please? Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much, Lord, for <clears throat> the privilege that we have uh, to pray. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you listen to our prayers. Uh, Lord, we do pray for these that have, all these requests that have been mentioned this morning, Lord, that uh, the best thing would happen, Lord, in each of those situations. Lord, we do pray for uh, Brother Rick as he delivers a message this morning to us, and uh, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be in our service, Lord, dealing with each heart. We pray for our future. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray, Lord, for forgiveness of 
sin. <clears throat> Pray that you'd be with each one of us as we go through this coming week that we would represent you well. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer a slave. Children's Church today, Kaylee. All right. Don't have to tell Stryker twice. Fire, cause fear 
when he told you you were trouble, you'll forever be alone. When he told you you should run away, you'll never find a home. When he told you you were dirty, and you should be ashamed. When he told you you could be the one that grace could never change. Oh, fear, he is a liar. He will take your breath, stop you in your stance. Fear, he is a liar. He will rob your your fear in the fire cause fear he is a liar let your fire fall and cast out all my fear let your fire fall your love is all I feel let your fire fall and cast out all my fear. Let your fire fall, your love is all I feel. Let your fire fall and cast out all my fear. Let your fire fall, your love is all I fear. Lord, let your fire fall and cast out Let your fire fall, your love is all I fear. Oh, fear, he is a liar. He will take your breath, stop you in your steps. Fear, he is a liar. He will rob your It's Jim's fault, there's no doubt about it. Everything, everything that happens around here is Jim's fault. So. Amen. <laughs> so Proverbs chapter uh, 29, verse 25, and we'll look there in just a minute. But uh, You guys, I know that we sang about not being afraid and all that kind of stuff, and, and certainly I agree with that. God gives us a great deal of things that we should do that, uh, um, that, that we shouldn't be afraid of. He even asks us to do sometimes things that might be scary to some folks, but we, we still do it. But, you know, there are genuine fears. How many of you guys here are afraid of wasps? Some of you say, yep, yep. I don't particularly like them. I'm not particularly afraid of them. I am highly allergic to them, though. And uh, so, so for years, I carried an EpiPen. And uh, they're a real pain because you have to keep them at a temperature and um, like a cooler temperature, and where do you need an EpiPen? You're going to get stung by a wasp where? Generally outdoors. In the summer, when it's hot, and the EpiPen is on ice somewhere, <laughs> right? So um, <clears throat> years ago, back in the early, early part of this uh, century, um, Dana had been bitten by a brown recluse. And she was in the hospital for a week, and it was bad. I mean, 
me, and that thing looked terrible where it bit her. And, uh, so th we happened to find out from a friend of hers who's in a Bible study about electrical shock and how it heals those wounds. And so sure enough, she came home from the hospital. She looked a little better, but the wound didn't. And within two days of shocking it, the wound was almost completely gone. And the doctor had started this study. He was out of Ada. But unfortunately, before he finished and published all he would learned on this uh, fact, he was killed in a car accident. So one of the things that I read from what he had published is that it worked with wasp things. All right? So <clears throat> I hadn't bought me a new EpiPen for the year, so I thought, I'm going to go get one of these little shocker things. And it looks kind of like a stun gun, except it has a spring release trigger rather than a full-on trigger. And... <clears throat> It will shock you like a stun gun. So if you flip it, though, it just kind of pinches. So believe it or not, the first place I encounter a red wasp is walking into the shed outside of our house, and it gets me right here. <laughs> so I walked in the house, took me a Benadryl. And I'm standing in front of the very door. Is it? <laughs> with this, with this No? All right. I'm not very good at holding the mic, but I'll try my best at it. But <clears throat> So anyway, so I said, okay, I've shocked it a couple of times. I took the Benadryl. Take me to the ER. I'm going to sit in the waiting room. And so we go sit in Seminole, Oklahoma's <laughs> ER in the waiting room and for about an hour. And then finally, I think they're wondering about it. It's like, why are these people sitting in the waiting room? So they come out and they ask us what's going on. So I told him what the scenario was and the... And the and uh, he was uh, an ER tech, and he said, I think the doctor needs to talk to you. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> so the doctor comes out, talks to me, goes, look, dude, if you haven't had a reaction in an hour and a half, you're not going to have one. So believe it or not, now I carry that with me. I've been stung four or five times. It always seems to work. That and a Benadryl. Now, the other problem is you take the Benadryl, you have to go take a nap somewhere, right? <laughs> so unlike when you get the EpiPen, if you hit yourself with that, you are all, you're awake for quite some time. Um, how about snakes? Anybody afraid of snakes? Yep, there's a few hands that went up. There are realistic fears in life. Snakes, um, you know, lions. <laughs> we don't have any of those in Oklahoma. Uh, we do have bears. Um, I, I, I hunt with my daughters quite a bit, and we, I, I love the turkey hunt. And, uh, and it, I mean, it's addicting. If you ever do it, it's addicting uh, because they talk back to you. It's the coolest thing. Uh, but where we hunted in western Oklahoma when they were smaller, I started carrying a pretty good-sized handgun just because of all the wild hogs. And they're, they're, they're just a little bit aggressive as well. I mean, there are things that we can be uh, for All of us have fears. But there are some fears that oftentimes are unrealistic. We're going to deal with four of those over the next four weeks. Uh, today we're going to deal with the, deal with the fear of rejection. Um, next week will be the fear of failure. After that, the fear of intimacy. And finally, the fear of losing control, which some of you already have. You shouldn't have that fear. Some of you have already lost control, right? <laughs> and some of us will lose it between now and then. All right. So as we look at the scripture today, I want you to look at what Proverbs 29, 25 says. It says, the fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. So, kind of let me caption that verse uh, in this, in this kind of small sentence. Man's fear is overcome by confidence in God. Your fear can be overcome by your confidence in God or your trust in God. 2 Timothy 1.7 says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Now, that verse itself, I would encourage you, commit that to memory. 
carry it around. If you're a person that's prone to fear, maybe even fear of rejection uh, from others and so forth, uh, God doesn't want you to walk with that. And that's why I think this, you know, when he was talking to Timothy, we talked about this verse a little bit last week. But he didn't give us a spirit of fear, Timothy, or whatever, put your name in that place. He gave us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind or self-discipline. So we need to take this scripture, we need to trust the scripture, and we need to have our confidence in who? In who? In God, absolutely. So let's look at a couple of things. And on the back of your bulletin, there's a place to take some notes. I hope you will. And so I want to talk about, first of all, some rejection traps. Rejection traps. One of them is this, number one. Some people are overly starved for attention, if you will. Uh, so in, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 24, we are talking about Saul. And Saul says this, and I'm going to give you the background after we read What happened was, God had told Saul to go into this battle. He had told him when they got in the battle, Saul, y'all don't take anything. Destroy it all. But some of the people came and said, what would it hurt if we did this? It's just a little portion of what was there. Just, just a tiny bit, Saul. And so what did Saul do? He gave in to those people. What did it cost Saul? Anybody remember? It cost him his kingship. God was not happy with him at all. And so, so that's why Saul says, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command. I was afraid of the people, and so I gave in to them. Afraid of the people? He was the king. God figured that one out, right? That's kind of difficult. So... Uh, how about us? God says this. He says, he says, great commandment. Jesus spoke it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all, all your being, everything. Love God with everything, right? And love your neighbor as yourself. Right? It's in the Bible. Amen? Can I get an amen on that? So it's in the Bible, but how many times do we, because of um, our overly starved conscience talk about other people now I know none of you have ever been guilty of that because this is First Baptist Church Wayne and that just does not happen here is that right well unfortunately probably not right I mean we all struggle from time to time with saying have you heard about such and such or I just can't believe that dude said that man that's just out of ah oh, that's just ridiculous you see you can't buy into just getting a little. God doesn't want that. He wants us to love him, and he wants us to love our neighbors. Amen? Amen. So let's do it with all we got. And if we're going to, if that thought comes to you and says, you know, you really need to express this to this person about that person, say, no. Everybody say it with me. No. So here's, here's what happens. If you're an approval addict, you have addition. You, you kind of have these things an ability, inability, excuse me, to confront, to, to, to speak the truth in love. Um, oftentimes approval addicts like Saul will give in and then inwardly they are angry, they're resentful because they're having to put up with these people that they don't want to put up with. It's kind of a really weird cycle whenever we're approval addicts. I don't think God wants us to be approval addicts. He doesn't even want us to be overly cautious. So number two on your outline should say overly cautious. Blessed is the man, Proverbs 28, 14 says this, who always fears the Lord and he who hardens his heart falls into trouble. So what it means there, and I would underline the first part of that, blessed is the man who always fears the Lord. When it says fear, that word there means we are understanding that sin and its consequences in relationship to the Lord. 
So I just mentioned if we talk some, about somebody else behind their back, what is that called? Gossip. God doesn't want us to do that. And if we do that, the Holy Spirit will convict us. And if we're following him pretty closely, then we're going to say, I fear the Lord, and I know that has consequences as I continue, and I'm confessing it to him. Confession is a good thing. Can I get an amen on that? Even for believers, confession is a good thing. And when we talk or do things behind someone's back, uh, because we're afraid we might get rejected if we don't. <laughs> I'm all over the place with this mic. But uh, I'm, we feel like we might get rejected. Uh, but I like what it says on the second part. He who hardens his heart, he's the guy that falls into trouble. So when God convicts you, don't be hard-hearted. Say, all right, Lord, I need to get this straightened out. I may even need to go to apologize to someone, right? That's a good thing. Matter of fact, that's a biblical principle taught in the New Testament. Isn't it? Absolutely. So uh, look what it says in John chapter 12, verses 42 through 43. It says, but because of the Pharisees, uh, they would not confess their fear or their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue. For they love the praise from men more than the praise from God. Wow. Man. They wanted to follow Jesus, but they just wouldn't confess it. They didn't, want to, they didn't want these other people to know because they might think less of them. They might get rejected. They might get kicked out of being a Pharisee area. You know, the Pharisee order. <laughs> okay, we'll call it that. Think about that. Have we ever thought in our minds... I'm not going to go down that road because somebody might think this. Somebody might think this. Um, several years ago, um, when I was coaching football, and I, I hope I haven't told this story. I've only been here six weeks, but um, or if that long. But I was coaching it, and like the first week of school, uh, two kids came to me. First week, and said, "Coach, I'm on the flunk list." And I went, okay, let me get this right. We've been in school a week. How do you get on the – I mean, have you even had a test? <laughs> no, I didn't turn in my homework. So I had a meeting after practice, and I said, this is what we're going to do. I said, nobody else is going to be on the flunk list the rest of the year. Next Monday, your teachers are all going to give me a report of how you're doing in class. I don't want stupid football players. And I use the word stupid. I want players with intelligence and players with integrity. That means you do your work that they ask you to do. You know what? They bought in. I never had another kid on the fail list for all the time that I coached there. Now, a couple of them I had to say, uh, your teacher says you're going to be there shortly if you don't get with the program. But you always have a few of those. But you know who, who, who raised Cain on that? the superintendent of the school system because it was not what Oklahoma Secondary School Asso Athletic Association said. They can have a D and play. Well, anybody can have a D. I'm, I think you can just show up. I don't know for certain, but just about show up in class. Some of you teachers could tell me different and just sit there and write out the stuff they ask you to write and make a D, right? You need to go to school to learn. Is that right? Yeah. So when we had our discussion, I wasn't really concerned about rejection. What I wanted him to know was the bar had been raised and they had come up to the bar. Now, I'm not saying that to brag on me. They don't get that wrong at all. But guess what? God is constantly raising the bar in your life. He does that so that we'll follow him more closely. Change is required to follow him more closely. And if you're afraid of what other men think or other women think, it will affect how you follow God. Don't let the fear of rejection enter into that situation. Don't be like the Pharisees. God gives us that example so that we can overcome that. So how do we overcome the fear of rejection? Number one, say yes to pleasing God. Say yes to pleasing God. But Jehoshaphat, 1 Kings 22, 5, but Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, First, we will seek the counsel of the Lord. 
So if you've got something coming up and you want to know exactly how to do it, you begin with seeking the counsel of the Lord. Don't go somewhere else. Look in the Bible. This is the rule book, the game plan, the you know driver's ed manual for, for Jesus followers, okay? That's what this is. Use it to your benefit. First seek the counsel of the Lord. And they were getting ready for war. That's a good time to do it, but every day we have things that we need to get ready for. I love what Jesus says in Matthew 6, verse 33. First seek the kingdom of his God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek him. Now, one of the things I have to tell you that you have to do here is this. In order to seek the Lord first, you have to be patient. And for us in our society, in the time in which we live, this is a difficulty that many, many people face, and it's a real difficulty. Because we can find almost everything that can instantly gratify us. I mean, think about it. How many of you guys remember long enough ago, and many of you will, uh, some of you won't, but how many of you remember when we only had four TV stations? That was it. Four TV. You had ABC, NBC, CBS, and PBS, and I don't even know why PBS was there. <laughs> I mean, when I was a young man, I, PBS, no, that was not on my agenda to watch. And then, not only that, if you had a TV, you did not have a remote unless you were a child and then you were the remote for your parents. That's the way it worked. So we live in this time of instant gratification. So if we're going to follow Christ and, and wait on God for, for what's, for, I mean, seek first his righteousness. What, seek the best. Then sometimes we have to wait. And waiting is not a bad thing. Matter of fact, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, those that wait on the Lord find their strength renewed and all these different good things, wait on God. It's a good thing. Okay? And then number two, we need to learn to say no to pleasing people. Isaiah 51, uh, in verses 12 and 13 says this, Who are you that you fear mortal men, the sons of men, but who are but grass that you forget the Lord your maker. So, okay, no matter how powerful they may seem, no matter how important they may seem, in God's eyes, they're just grass. So sometimes when we fear rejection, I want you to keep that in mind that you can just think a little bit about the fact that they're just grass. Uh, it's like Ecclesiastes, that, you know, we've just got we got this whisper of time that we're here on this planet. In God's scheme, if, he, if God is eternal, which is very hard for us to understand that, that concept, but if he's eternal and we live at best 100 years, that's not, that's, a drop, that's not even a drop in the bucket. That's not even a drop. So why would we get all concerned about those around us um, that are just going to whisper away just like our life will at some point as well. Galatians 1.10 says it like this, and I'm, I put a little bit asterisk in my Bible by this verse. Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? Paul says, if I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Paul's not interested in pleasing men. Who is he interested in pleasing? Jesus Christ and God. That's who he was interested in pleasing. Lloyd Ogilvie, who was a longtime um, uh, chaplain for the United States Senate, wrote this, Securing God's love, I will not surrender my self-worth to the opinions and judgments of others. When I am rejected, I will not retaliate. When I am hurt, I will allow God's love to heal me. And knowing the pain of rejection, I will seek to love those who suffer from its anguish. You know, rejection is a, really, a very real feeling. But what I don't want and what God doesn't want, and the reason I'm preaching this this morning is because he does not want us to be 
fearful of rejection. Sometimes it does happen. And it can be very hard. But as uh, Chaplain Ogilvy says, I'm going to allow that pain uh, to help me love other people who awful also will suffer that same kind of anguish. So in our lives, as we think about the fear of rejection, uh, fearing things like this, what do we do with this information? Well, number one, I'm going to encourage you strongly, 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 learn how to say no. It is one of the hardest things that you will ever learn because you, it's, if you're a believer and, a, and a, a sincere follower of Christ, you want to try to do everything and please as many people as you can in the sense that you want to serve them. But sometimes you just have to say no. Sometimes you have to uh, say no because of your own spiritual health, because of the, your own uh, spiritual disciplines, and, and some of that takes time. Some of that takes time. There are certain uh, days, if you call me, you will get voicemail. It doesn't mean I don't want to talk to you, except at that time I'm doing something that's more important, and that's working on a relationship with God. And he needs to refresh me, and I realize that, because as a pastor many days, and you, even as a follower of Christ, the same may be true for you, people will pull, 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 and you have to refresh or it will wear you smooth out, <laughs> is the best way to put that, I guess. So if you get my voicemail, please leave a message, or you can text me. That's okay. I will respond, maybe two days, but I'll get back to you. <laughs> because be patient. Wait on that. Listen, God wants you to have the very best he intended for your life. Never let a fear of any of the kinds that we're going to deal with over the next four weeks, but especially the fear of rejection, interfere with what he wants, which is the best. Because the best from God, it's always good stuff. You know, I'm a 70s kid, so it's cool. So let's bow together in prayer. Father, thank you for this time we've had in your word. And I ask this father this morning as we have an opportunity to respond, there may be some here that God have really struggled um, with the fear of rejection, whether it be in their family, whether it be maybe at school, whether it be in any number of different situations they might have found themselves in. And Lord, I hope that they understand from what your word teaches us this morning that there is a way to practically apply this, uh, God, so that that's not a real fear in their lives, rather they're, rather they're dependence on you becomes the priority not a fear of rejection because God when we're dependent upon you good things happen in our life in the sense God that we know that you're leading the way and we're not trying to lead our own way so Father go with us or be with us this morning as we have an opportunity to respond and God as we do I ask that you would speak to each individual heart by your Holy Spirit's power it's in Jesus name we pray Amen. Let's stand together, and I'll be here at the front. If you'd like to pray with me, or if you'd just like to come and kneel at the altar and say, Lord, this, this, hit, this hit me in the head this morning. This is something that I need to address with you. This is an opportunity to respond to that. It's also an opportunity to just uh, come before the Lord and say, I want to be more dependent upon you, Jesus. So just respond now as the Lord gives us this opportunity.
ocean flood that washes white as snow. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you. If you would remain standing, I want you to look to somebody to your right, somebody to your left, and say, I'm so glad to see you in church today. So I'm going to give the media people a heads up. We're going to go back before we leave this morning, and we're going to sing one of the praise hymns again because I really dig this, this song. And so also, uh, if you had a bulletin, I'm not going to go over the details in there. You read it. But there's a big surprise coming at the end of August. Nobody ever had two people this morning say, what's the surprise? It won't be a surprise if I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody asked me that anymore. Till, no, it'll be coming up more information soon. Uh, and also, um, there's some other meetings and stuff that we have scheduled, so please pay attention to those. And, uh, and uh, anyway, have a fantastic week. We're going to close with singing this. What is the name of this song? No Longer Slave. No Longer Slave to Fear. There we go. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me.
so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea. You split the sea so.